Maybe it's because I'm from the cable generation that my mind has such a nostalgia to go back to a, a more classical time when more there were innocent time. A more innocent time when there were fewer TV channels brainwashing us all, and really a moment where the country, if not the world, seemed to take a sharp turn for the worst. That moment in history that pre predated our current decline and really highlighted it. One in of all the first its- times that the television trauma-based mind controlled the entire country and indeed this was a time when nearly everyone had access to television if they didn't have it in their home and there were only three channels and everyone says they remember where they were on this day it's of course everyone trusted and believed everything that was coming out of the boob tube the assassination of jfk was a pivotal moment not only because a president was killed And not only because a shadow government took over and used a huge, big lie that it sold to the public, but because the masses connected with this lie through the television, and it really set up an entire wave, a tidal wave, of more lies and false flag events. This new age of so-called CNN syndrome, where events are either created or exploited for their TV and emotional effect. And don't forget, it was the first live murder on television. All in one, like a pretty package from hell. Let's go back to the packaging of the lies just for a moment. Here's Walter Cronkite presenting the Warren Commission's findings on uh, CBS. Oh, isn't he your favorite? The rifle was in a sixth-floor window, a window behind the president. Yet some witnesses believe they heard shots from in front of him. There was what appeared to be a bullet uh, nick in the windshield of the limousine. And Parkland Hospital doctors were quoted to say they thought at least one bullet entered Mr. Kennedy's neck from the front. Studiously, scientifically. We have drawn this picture of a guy by the window. The Warren Commission has drawn an official scientific sketch of Oswald proving that everything they said he did, he did. (laughs) This total evidence picture plants a specific image in the public's mind, as does this car we rented to drive down the same route of the president. No, they scientifically sat in the car in the same place as the president and then turned a corner. They have deliberately given the public the impression that this was a real investigation when it was a hoax. Here's the Warren Commission pretending to look at different notes and calculations pertaining to the shots at the car and the physics of how this could have happened in a way to make it fit the official story. Exactly. Military experts applied years of training to put a tape measure next to a car. Look, it's a lie. I hope you face that by now. But let's just look symbolically back again at that key moment when it all happened, when the lie first crystallized. And I want to take you to the very first CBS flash bulletin that interrupted the soap opera as the world turns. And and even if this is not, this is just creepy. Let, let me just say, this is this creepy. Well, first we're going to listen to the first flash recording and then watch what comes right after it. A great deal of thought, Grandpa. So they're interrupting television. The, and this is, is a already got the public News. shook up. In Dallas, Texas, three shots were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. The first reports say that President Kennedy has been seriously wounded by this shooting. More details just arrived. And there's some fumbling These around. These details about the same as previously. President Kennedy shot today just as his motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed Mr. Kennedy. She called, oh no, the motorcade sped on. United Press says that the wounds for President Kennedy perhaps could be fatal. Very dramatic. A bulletin from CBS News, President Kennedy has been shot by a would-be assassin in Dallas, Texas. Stay tuned to CBS News for further details. Now tell us if this is a coincidence. It takes more than an instant to make a real cup of coffee. That's why Nescafe has come up with a new kind of coffee. It's more than an instant. It's new Minute Brew Nescafe. Anybody can make a coffee more instant, but Nescafe makes it more coffee. A new kind of coffee. Minute Brew. Minute Brew Nescafe is a new discovery, a new way to hold in extra rich flavor. Even the spoon so becomes a mesmerizing pendulum. Minute Brew in the cup a few seconds longer for all that extra flavor to come out. 
In other words, with Minute Brew Nescafe, it takes a little longer. Even behind the guy. How ridiculous is that? And this is just fascinating. It's not proof of anything directly. It's just one of those things that makes you scratch your head and say, hmm. Well, everybody anywhere in their house could hear this, you know, breakthrough. They probably dropped everything they were doing to run into their living room, wherever their television was, to watch what... Even though it's just a break in, you can't see a person talking. They're just breaking through the, the show to to run in the room and what's going to happen next. They're probably freaking out at that moment. And then the very first thing they're shown is this. And people who lived through 9-11 through the television know that this was a big event. You remember where you were on 9-11. You remember the sequence of events, how you heard about it's it. It's been burned and into you, our collective mind. Oh, yeah. You remember seeing that footage of the towers collapsing over and over and over as they sold the biggest lies in history since the JFK assassination. And from this moment forward, the act of the pendulum you know, ironic or telling, you've got the public mesmerized by these flash news reports, manipulated by the media, and goaded on for decades and decades by completely fabricated evidence that came out later in investigations, and they tried to marginalize those people, and there were moments where they got things wrong, but there was a huge coordinated lie in the establishment, and the media was a key part of it. And isn't it just funny that this pendulum shows up at that exact moment? Further ironic, the next flash report did pertain to witnesses saying they thought they saw the shots coming from the grassy knoll. But it's that evidence and other key evidence that's very quickly, hours and minutes after this, swept away uh they began to insert the official lie, and before long it becomes the Warren Report, ridiculous as it is, sold to the public as a factual investigation. And you've got to remember another thing about this being a TV mass mind control event. The accused assassin is killed live on TV in the first ever live murder. Of course, we're talking about Oswald shot by Ruby, and they even lied about them having connections. Well, they were connected. We'll get more into the actual evidence of the JFK stuff later, but just think about these telling, powerful, gripping TV moments and what precedence they were. And you could see cops oh, moving see people that out guy? of the way. Yeah, let's show him that guy. Here, wait, pause it, pause it. See this guy in the hat that's right here in the front in the middle that's walking down? Watch his reaction. Watch what he does. This is the basement floor of the Dallas City Hall. Well, I didn't even really act all the that bottom surprised. line is the cops worked with the mafia in Dallas, especially in those days. And there was a big shadow government thing going on with Ruby connected to government people from Nixon to the CIA crowd. Oswald was an FBI informant who was also working inside the CIA. And basically they burned him as a patsy. But the public was told otherwise. And what a fantastic television production gripping everyone in the nation and you know, getting them at least for a time to swallow these lies. I mean, we think about 9-11 truth today. How slowly must those steps have come out in, in the days of JFK? And how brave are those people who did speak out? Uh, many of the witnesses killed in that case. But, I mean, your comments? <laughs> oh, I just, I just think it's amazing how the use of television over the decades has gotten more and more hypnotizing and it all, I mean, I, I won't say that it all started with this event, but this was a huge event that collectively traumatized America. Oh, yeah. And the, tele, the television was a huge part of that happening. And when people watched it, uh, they, they looked to this as an authoritative source for information. It, what was on it was true, basically. And people didn't consciously know it at the time, but elements of the shadow government, illegitimate powers took power and by demonstrating their lies on the TV, people passively accepted it and from this moment on began to think of things in terms of the way they're presented. They become pawns of the establishment. I mean, the television has a way to bring everybody together on this kind of stuff. 
I mean, it's been called the Babylonian language because you don't need to speak the same language to watch moving images and it, and it connects everybody all over the world through the television. So think about that and what they were doing with this event and going through this evidence as if it's real and true and legitimate and everything they're saying is just rock solid truth. And then you see that, that commercial and it's just what that has got to be the greatest coincidence of all time. There it is, the pendulum in the coffee commercial. The first commercial after they announced that JFK's been shot. With a new kind of coffee, it's more than an instant. It's new. And now believe everything you're told. Anyway, we just want to make that illustration, and we're going to be talking more about technology, what it means in our life, the effect of television, and where the system's going, and what their lives really are. And also more reports on JFK this year. Yeah, it is the 50th the anniversary. anniversary. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you soon.